Hello friends, in my this video, I am going to discuss about amplitude modulation and its spectrum using FFT. Okay, so already we have a good background of FFT, the concept of zero padding we have discussed and apart from that filtering using FFT also we have discussed. Now in the analog communication system, the one of the simplest uh, modulation scheme whatever we have studied that is amplitude modulation in which the carrier high frequency carrier amplitude varies with respect to message signal and we know this kind of uh, representation we get if we a plot in y axis the voltage and in x axis the frequency then after the modulation we should get three main component one is upper side band one is lower side band and another one is carrier frequency okay carrier frequency should be at fc a lower side band should be at fc minus fm upper side band should be at fc plus fm okay so we will try to uh, do amplitude modulation in matlab and we will verify whether we are getting this kind of spectrum or not okay Obviously, as we are considering a 50, so voltage y axis will not match because in y axis we will plot basically magnitude of our a 50, okay, not the voltage, but the frequency axis will remain same. So we will verify whether in our amplitude modulated waveform the frequency components are present in exact location, that is, if theory is matching with practical or not, that we will verify, okay. So suppose I will, uh, what is the configuration of our modulation scheme? That is, we will take message signal of 10 Hz frequency, modulation index we will take 0 0.5, sampling frequency we will take 1000 Hz and and carrier frequency we are taking as 100 Hz, okay now generate the message signal first okay so what will be our sampling time sampling time should be one by sampling frequency our sampling frequency is given as thousand hertz so sampling time will be one by thousand and you know sampling time is nothing but the interval between two successive samples and in matlab everything is basically discrete so if we want to do uh, the sampling what we will do we will basically keep the uh, the increment between two samples in time domain equal to our sampling time okay so that i have written at t equal to 0 colon 1 by 1000 colon 3 this is time sample range of our input signal and then m equal to sine 2 pi fmt here it is given that we have to generate message signal of 10 hertz frequency so i am writing like this Okay, plot t comma m. If I run this particular part, we will be getting message signal of frequency 10 hertz. Okay, well and good up to this. Now what we will do, we will check the spectrum of our message signal first. Okay, so n equal to length of t. That is what is our length of our message signal. The, that point f t we have to compute, right? Because you know that if our... Uh, signal is from 0 to capital N minus 1 then N point DFT we compute so that I am computing the length of my signal and that much point FFT I am computing y equal to FFT of M comma N and then I am taking single sided part you know 0 to capital N by 2 is our point of interest but in MATLAB index start from 1 so that we will take 1 to N by 2 plus 1 but N by 2 may become a fractional value so we will take floor okay so we don't know we are not uh, thinking about bothering about what is the length whether even or odd we are taking floor directly so that it will be always an integer and k equal to 0 to floor of n by 2 because you know that 0 to n by 2 is our point of interest for k value also and then we are plotting that using same command okay so if i run this particular part we will be getting this kind of a50 okay now is this a 50 this is this magnitude response is belonging to that message signal only very simply we can understand let me just zoom this particular part and we are getting the peak at k corresponding to 30 you i hope you can see at k equal to 30 we are getting the peak right so k equal to 30 now put the k value in the frequency 
and we will let us check whether we are getting our message signal frequency or not okay so digital frequency in radian you know that is 2 pi by capital n into k here k value we are getting as 32 so 2 pi by capital n into 30 okay analog frequency and digital frequency relationship is what digital frequency is equal to analog frequency into sampling time that is analog frequency in radian equal to nothing but digital frequency divided by sampling time okay that's what I have done here analog frequency in radian equal to digital frequency in radian by ts and analog frequency in frequency in hertz will be what analog frequency in radian by 2 pi because you know omega equal to 2 pi f so now let us compute this particular part and let, let me just show you the value of our frequency here analog frequency in hertz if i write this variable here in the comment window we are getting the frequency as 9.9967 what was our frequency message signal 10 hertz which is that is almost correct only 9.9967 is nothing but 10 only we can say so okay spectrum is fine only so message signal spectrum also we have seen now comes the modulation part you know that message uh, amplitude modulation formula is ac into 1 plus modulation index into message signal into sine 2 pi fct that's what i have written here s equal to 10 10 is our ac or carrier frequency and am voltage amplitude okay 10 into 1 plus 0 0.5 into m dot star sine 2 pi fct why fc i have taken as 100 because here it is given that carrier frequency you have to take as 100 hertz point to be noted here i have given dot star why dot star because when you are computing this particular part 1 plus 0 0.5 into m what is our m our m is one message signal which is basically one array and see our sine 2 pi 100t t is also an array so sine 2 pi ft will also be one array when you multiplying two array for element by element multiplication we have to give dot star right then we are plotting t comma s that is we are plotting our amplitude modulated signal okay if we run this particular part we will be getting our amplitude modulated signal as this one okay if i zoom this you can clearly understand the amplitude modulation okay so see here this is nothing but amplitude modulation well known graph okay so now we will plot the spectrum okay so for the spectrum same code just in uh, see in the message signal what we have used for plotting the spectrum that is f50 we have written whatever that only we will write just instead of f50 of message signal comma n now you have to write f50 of amplitude modulated signal comma n okay see that's what i have written here n equal to length of t y equal to f50 of amplitude modulated signal comma n and then we are computing the single sided spectrum okay if i run this particular part we will be getting this particular response now verify see this is what our magnitude response we are getting from a 50 and theoretically you will know this one one high peak then two side uh, uh, there is lower side band upper side band will be there okay so that's what we are getting one very high peak and then these two lower and upper side band now we have to check whether this particular high peak corresponding to fc and this particular uh, left side peak corresponding to fc minus fm and right side corresponding to fc plus fm or not that what that's what we have to verify so i will zoom this particular part and see what we are getting okay let me zoom it for this part yeah see our uh lower side band is appearing here and this is upper one and this is the upper side band okay what we will do calculating the x axis is a bit difficult in that way what we will do we will use data cursor so we will take data cursor from the tools and we will put here okay what amplitude we are what x equal to what value we are getting 300 so at a equal to 300 this this we are getting left side put here at x equal to 270 that means k equal to 270 and here 3 330 so 270 300 and 330 okay so i have written that's only if sorry this is k actually k equal to 270 300 330 okay now what we are doing now verifying the frequency component present in modulated wave okay so what is our formula you know that uh, 
digital frequency in radian is nothing but 2 pi by capital N into K that's what I have done here now we are converting into analog frequency in radian that is analog frequency in radian equal to digital frequency into radian by TS by, that is by sampling time because digital frequency in radian is nothing but analog frequency in radian multiplied by TS okay so if we get analog frequency in radian simply we can compute analog frequency in Hertz as analog frequency in radian by 2 pi because we know analog frequency in radian that is omega is nothing but 2 into pi into f where f is analog frequency in Hertz that's all if I run this particular part if I now do control C that is I want to check what what is my analog frequency in Hertz okay so let me just clear this window and analog frequency in Hertz I am writing see three values we are getting and observe the pattern 89.97 99.96 109.96 what we should get see FC at FC one peak we should get so FC is how much how much 100 for our case FC minus FM is how much 100 minus 10 because our message signal having the frequency as 10 so 100 minus 10 that is 90 and this should be FC plus FM that is 100 plus 10 that is 110 so 90 100 110 we should get that's what we are getting 89.97 means 90 only 99.9667 means 100 only 109.963 means almost closely we can say 110 so at 90 100 110 we are getting peaks okay like we have seen here and which is matching with the theory also fc minus fm fc fc plus fm in our case we have chosen fc as 100 fm as per 10 okay so that we are getting if at uh, 100 hertz at 90 hertz and at 110 hertz peaks okay so this is what uh, the matlab implementation of amplitude modulation so if you know fft then only uh, in simple way you can compute and check the magnitude spectrum otherwise it will be difficult okay you should know what is the relationship between digital frequency and analog frequency what is the uh, how can we achieve the digital frequency from the k values of fft okay what is the relationship that is 2 pi by capital n into k if this theory is clear to you you can simply play with matlab for different communication system modeling okay same code i am going to post in the description box if you want you can check there thank you for watching